everybody, welcome back to Sticky Floor Friday, the internet movie show that challenged you last week to pitch me a board game that I could turn into a movie. And I got a lot of interesting entries. Uh, I particularly enjoyed Checkers, a porn with black guys and blonde girls. And, uh, of course, Card Games on Motorcycles. Card Games on Motorcycles. Card Games on Motorcycles! Card Games on Motorcycles. But the winning entry came from a one Eric Barnes. Congratulations, Eric. I tweaked his pitch just a little bit to create a trailer, but I think it's pretty faithful. In a world where Jay Leno has become an insane mutant dictator, children have become mankind's only hope for saving the world. And saving the world requires... Perfection from Milton Bradley. Unfortunately, these kids... I did it! ...are idiots. Alright, that was goofy. But let's talk about something a little less goofy. It's one of the most anticipated movies of the summer. A movie shrouded in secrecy. It is Judy Moody and the Not Bummer Summer with Stink. Finally, Stink comes to the big screen. Been waiting forever for this. Of course, I'm not actually going to talk about Judy Moody. We're talking Super 8, a throwback to Spielberg classics filtered through the hipster glasses of J.J. Abrams. It's about a group of kids in 1979 who set out to make a zombie movie and witness a train accident that turns out to be so much more than a train accident. And I'm going to tell you right off the bat, this is my favorite movie of the summer so far. I love Super 8. And it's really simple. The reason is because I was emotionally invested in this film from start to finish. And that has a lot to do with the fact that I can relate to the main characters. As a kid, I built models. I made movies. I was an outcast. I grew up in Ohio around the same time as these kids. So watching it feels like riding through my old neighborhoods. It's nostalgia, but also it just connected with me because the main character suffers a tragedy and I experienced something similar to that growing up and it just was so easy for me to be on board for the entire ride. These are real kids. They talk like real people. So think of Goonies, Monster Squad, E.T., they swear, they talk about things that kids talk about, they react appropriately to frightening situations, they're funny, they make fun of each other, it's just so refreshing and it feels so natural. It doesn't feel like a screenwriter's dialogue, it just feels like these kids are being kids. It'd be good for you to spend some time with kids who don't run around with cameras and monster makeup. The plot itself is shrouded in secrecy, much like Cloverfield was. I'm not going to spoil anything, but your best guess is probably pretty close to the mark. Now, that stuff isn't really all that compelling, but it doesn't matter because everything else surrounding it is. And for a long time, they follow the Jaws rule of less is more. You don't see a lot of what's happening. It's a lot of insinuated violence. Stuff like that is great. It's worth noting, though, that the movie does start to lose itself in the last act because they start reversing that and showing you more and more. For me, though, it didn't matter. Super 8 grabbed me emotionally, and it made me feel. It made me laugh, it made me feel nostalgic and happy and thrilled, and it transported me to a different time and place. And that is why movies exist. Super 8 is so worth your time, I implore you to go see it. All right, time for three questions. Number one. What are your thoughts on Super 8? Number two, what is your favorite Spielberg movie? Ooh, good question. I think I'm going with Jaws, but that means I'm passing up Raiders and Jurassic Park and E.T. and Saving Private Ryan and The Terminal and... Wait. And number three, what's your favorite movie starring kids? Card games on motorcycles!